Hello, this is Nathan, and welcome back to our casual guide to Dwarf Fortress. Now, if you're a newcomer to this video or the series, welcome. What we're aiming to do is just having like a casual playthrough of Dwarf Fortress. And as I'm playing, I'm explaining things as like a tutorial and just explaining why I'm doing things a certain way. Uh, this is casual because I set off some options in the beginning on the Embark tutorial where we don't have any where beasts to worry about. So that's pretty much the only option I did uh, differently. So that way we can have an easier time here. Anyway, let's get right into it. So on our last episode, I ended off when some migrants arrived. We need to deal with them. So let's go over that. The first thing that you wanna do with migrants, if you want, uh, Pretty much the only thing you can do is you want to see who they are, right? Like, who's who's coming to the fortress? What skills do they bring? So what we want to do is go down and click on the citizen information menu. Uh, it looks like U is the hotkey for that. And we can take a look at who is depicted as a new arrival. Now, if you wait too long when this happens and they get into your fortress and start doing things, this label will be gone. So make sure you pause it and take a look at who's coming to the fortress. Now we can see we have a weaponsmith, a blinking weaponsmith, and another weaponsmith. So that's interesting, a lot of weaponsmith, but the blinking one is what we're interested in. This is going to be, if we go to their skills, they're legendary. Every, anytime you see someone blinking, having a name, it means they're a legendary in something. And it kind of looks like everything else they're okay with. So this is our weaponsmith. So we are going to make sure uh, that they're the ones designing our weapons when it comes down to it. So they'll probably get their own little workshop space, um, which I will show when we need to. But in the meantime, let's give let's do a little nickname so that way we can see them um, uh, easier. You know, with nicknames, I'll show you guys. So uh, let's do um, we'll just say Smithy for now. Okay, so we got Smithy, uh, the uh, Melbeal Smithy Sailing Goman. <laughs> I think Smithy is this in Dwarf. I'm not sure what the second part is, but uh, they're also a creator of, looks like some artifacts. So let's see here. So if we go back to the uh, information here, I think there's another way. Yeah, objects menu. Nothing yet. No, no. Artifacts. I wonder if they have to get into our fortress for me to see that. But they definitely created something. Um, is there anything else I can see here? Skills, rooms, labor. I was hoping there was a way to see what they made. Oh well. She dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Well, that should be pretty easy to do since she's a legendary. So we have her, and as you can see in the uh, menu here, that they have a little name, Smithy, um, that comes first. And if you order it by name, the nicknames will show up first, and then it'll just be everybody alphabetically. Otherwise, it's by profession that it's linked to. So we've got some new people. Um, another thing to worry about or to think about, depending on, I guess, which way you look at it, is with new arrivals, they come with pets and animals. So let's give it some time here. I want to see if there's more or is it just a small amount of migrants? Looks like those are the only guys coming. So let's see if they brought any animals. The easiest way, in my opinion, to see that is to go... Oh, do we not have a pasture yet? Interesting. I just must have them around here. So let's actually build a pasture for them. Uh, we're going to just create it over here for now. It's going to be kind of big. And we'll call it outside pasture. And we just want our animals that have to graze out here. So we're going to click on this bunny rabbit. Um, and then we can take a look here. So the, this list is usually by history. So whoever, it goes in order. So these are the animals that I brought um, with us. 
when we uh, first started out with the fortress. And then you can see there is these animals, which I did not bring. I'm pretty sure I didn't. So we want to make sure that they go over here. There's a donkey, some yak, uh, two bulls, which we really only need one if we want to breed. And then there's a stray keet. And then we'll make the llamas come over here too, because they need to graze. Uh, turkeys, dogs, and cats do not need to eat in order to survive. They're just kind of left to their own means. So let's do that. The reason why you want to check the animals when a migrant wave comes, because sometimes they will come with like those yaks and things, and the yaks will just wander around. They're not going to be attached to the wagon at all. Um, at least I don't think so. And they can go into wander inside this fortress and die because, well, they're stupid. They don't realize that they need to go outside and eat. They just kind of meander and do their own thing. So perfect. So that's pretty much all you have to do with the migrant wave. Um, since we are getting more people, I want to set up a dormitory or no bedrooms for them. Not a dormitory. We already have one of those. So let's do that. Uh, this is our dormitory. And then, of course, we've got our workshop area, which is still being dug out. Um, so, yeah. So, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, I'm trying to think. That just must be where... Okay. That must be excess. I haven't set up everything yet on this. Uh, we'll just do it as we need to. Uh, but what I am going to do is first create the bedroom layer. So... I like to do everything around this uh, staircase, main entryway. I think they call it like a rib fortress because everything's kind of branching out in one center thing. Um, instead of having like a, uh, I don't know, or like an organic feel to the cave. Um, this is more structured. So whatever you like. I like doing it this way. Keeps my brain happy. So this is our last layer of our workshop so we'll need to dig down more um, and I'm leaving the center thing I was saying in previous episodes that I would leave like a statue here uh, you can mine out this section and it'll be flat you can put a statue here and as people are using it they'll notice that statue and gain a happy thought what I'm going to do and it's going to be in a separate video so please look forward to that I'm going to make a waterfall that goes straight through the center here so it creates mist and it makes our doors have happy thoughts. It is an incredible way of keeping your doors happy. Uh, in my, I have another fortress on my Steam Deck that I've been playing and using that trick with the waterfall going down the middle, my guys are only in this green area. I don't have anyone who is unhappy past the yellow or I guess technically past this lighter green. Um, that's, it's so easy to keep your doors happy if you do that. Uh, you know, of course, if you're doing other things, giving them bedrooms and such, but um, it is it is great. So I'll make sure to show you guys that. So anyway, let's get to the bedrooms. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down twice. Um, so we're gonna go one, two, and then we're gonna make sure to race the metal here. There we go. So we're gonna do that. And I'm going to show you guys why I'm doing it twice. <sighs> and actually, let's start... Oh, wait. No, no, no. I'm doing that wrong. I just noticed. We need to be making staircases. There we go. Much better. Um, and let's actually switch this to... to one. So that way they get on this. Pause it. There we go. Okay. I want them to do that first. This isn't as important. They have access. Yeah. Small migrant wave. We only have... That was like three people and they're all weaponsmiths. Oh, another reason why this is casual if you're new. It's because I have almost everything set to easy. So, like, the economic thing is normal, but... Uh, our fortress embark has a lot of metals, flex stone, soil, clay, sand, that kind of thing. So I'm basically making this as straightforward as possible. That way, if you're new to Dwarf Fortress, it gets your feet wet. And that way you can use this knowledge 
to maybe do a more difficult embark, which I might show in a later video. Okay, so we're gonna mine this out. I always like doing the landing bit. Cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is start making our bedrooms. Now, there's a lot of different ways to make bedrooms. So feel free to uh, do whatever you want with them. Some people like to give them like just one little square bedrooms. Some people will create a line that way there's a bed, cabinet, and like a chest. Uh, and the door would be right here, you know, if this was like our hallway. Uh, some people like doing it this way where you're creating, you know, whoops, little individual rooms. You can go bigger, of course, you know, some people like the three by three. So that, I like doing this way of doing things but I don't like how much room this takes as you can see it's wasting some space here and you know the door takes up its own space so it's a lot of space I don't want to be wasting it's just a personal preference um, so what I'm gonna do so is first I'm gonna create this hallway whoops come on and then we're gonna start mining some stuff out here so let's do I'm just trying to think in advance. You guys will see what I'm doing. So if I create it here, yeah, that should be okay. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go up once and then we're gonna start designing our rooms. So I'm gonna show you, whoops, let's do that. So I'm gonna design them in these four little pockets. That's how many that I usually make as I go, and then I make the entrances oriented in the center here. There we go. And then we can go, well, we can do this. There we go. And now there's like a little hallway that they go into uh, to go up into their rooms. So instead of having like a hallway to go in their room, they take stairs and go up into their little apartment. If you build a hatch here, it counts as a door, and then uh, they're happy, you know, we can create bedrooms and pretty much good to go here. I am gonna correct one thing, which is just for my own preference. I'm gonna go down one more. I think it's right here. Let's see. Yeah, okay, perfect. There we go. Perfect. So we have 10 people. So we already have four bedrooms here. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Now there's a faster way of creating like a, um, like a macro where it saves your mouse clicks in the directions. And then you just click on the hotkey and it will, you know, copy your, or it'll replay your clicks and stuff. So you can actually set these up really fast. I'll probably have that as a separate video, but for this, I don't really mind clicking doesn't bother me of course you can always do it this way too let's see or you just do one big blob and then cut it out and cut it out this way you know a lot of different ways so what is this one two three four five six so we have 12 perfect There we go. And then we're going to shave this off. All right. So let's have them start doing that. Um, one thing I would like to have as part of this to make my life a little easier. You know, when you're making bedrooms, we're going to have to make beds. And some of these migrant waves can get out of control. Like me getting three, that's really low. When your first migrant wave happens, that's generally what you'll get. Maybe like closer to six or seven but there's some times where you'll get more than 10 people more than 20 dwarves and so making beds can be kind of cumbersome because as you know when you first make them you just have to click it uh, beds are kind of convenient since they're on top here but um, if you want to make a specific amount well how do you do that well that's with work orders work orders are uh, how you can tell a dwarf how many to make specifically. The thing is, we need a manager uh, to add work orders. So, 
You know, the game doesn't really tell us what that means, but anytime there's a title, uh, something like that, go to, you know, here, uh, the citizen menu. I just click it since it's the bottom left, but if you actually click on the nobles, it'll pop up this screen. So right now we have an expedition leader. They're just assigned that way. They're kind of like a mayor in the sense that this is a small expedition and someone needs to be the leader. So Kadal here is our leader. Um, that will change as we get a bigger fortress. So with a manager, there it is, manager. And if you mouse over it, it tells you what it does. They handle work orders. Um, yeah. So let's just uh, give somebody that role. And generally the people that are more, um, what's the word I'm using for? <sighs> The dwarves with skills that are relevant to the position will be on top. So you can see here Shem is a novice organizer, which we made sure to have during our embark. Uh, because we knew, or at least I knew, that we were going to need a manager. So let's assign her to be a manager. And as you can see, when they get assigned something, there's these icons here. This tells you what they're needing. So the red means that they need a study. As you can see here, I wish I could, I might have to point this and edit, but on top there, you can see needs meager study. And right now they don't have no study. So we need to make sure we make a meager study for them. And as you can see, there's bedroom, dining hall, a tomb. Uh, this is like furniture that they require. Um, I want to say this one is, it's demanding. So there are certain positions that demand uh, certain goods to be made, which I think is this hammer one. It would make sense. And then the this icon with the chest, they can ban certain exports. So they could say, no, I don't want you selling any short sorts. And so when trading happens, you can't get rid of any of them. Some nobles are annoying because maybe they'll ban things that you normally trade. Uh, some of them are pretty reasonable, like like I was saying with the short sword. I have a fortress right now where they'll ban short swords. I will never sell those, so I don't mind if they do that. But anyway, so we assigned this manager, and now we got to make a room for them. Um, I'm going to put the uh, office space here, so we'll do two. So we'll do two for this. I didn't make the little landing for this guy. Um, and then we want to build an office. So I'm going to build an office right off this uh, hallway here. So let's see. Let's do this. And it's going to be kind of small. Um, it does not need to be big at all. Uh, they only need a meager study. So having just this amount of room will work. Now what makes a study? The only thing you need is a chair. Uh, so we are going to do a rock um ch -ch -ch chair oh no it's a throne when it is rock so we're gonna make a rock throne and a rock table and i'm gonna actually make a bookcase in there too just to be kind of fancy i guess so we're gonna do that uh, those guys are gonna dig them out they're already digging out the rooms here which is perfect looks like we have some copper here pretty nice Yeah, we're getting a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff on this. And then we have uh, bituminous, bituminous coal, which is great. Uh, we can use that in our smelters. Uh, well, our kiln? No, what is it called? Wood furnace? Something. We can burn it to make coal uh, or coke. And that way we're not using wood to do that. All right, so are we going up and... All right, so they already got that down. So what we're going to do... I, for these specific areas, like a study, um, a tomb, a guild hall, those kind of things, I don't like having these rocks here. So the easiest way to get rid of those is to make a dump zone. So let's make that. So a garbage dump is essentially exactly what it is. Things you do not want the dwarves to be using and to get rid of, like throw away. Uh, you can put a dump zone down in a cavern. You can put it in water, I believe, if you really wanted to. Uh, but I like to just make like a little offshoot somewhere. 
away from the fortress. Let's do it over. Let's do it up here. We're going to do up here. So we'll just keep it as is. We don't need to do anything special. And then we're going to go down to our study. And we're going to go down here. I, it looks like. And then we're going to designate as a dumping. So we'll just do that. And then they'll come over here and dump those guys. Um, we need to make a... Whoops. There we go. We need to make a door. Make rock door. And then another thing I like doing... Ooh, I did not see that. They, this is technically... They can go in and out right here. So let's make a wall. I should not have made that so close to the landing. But that's not a big deal. Okay. And another thing I like doing is smoothing it out. I like to smooth out their study area so that at least if they're spending time in there, they might get a good feeling of the room. It increases the value of the room. That way, uh, instead of a meager study, maybe it'll be a study and uh, they'll just get better thoughts about it. So as you can see here, everybody's smoothing it out. Uh, let's see if that door is ready. It is perfect. There we go. Okay, so let's put that furniture down. So chair. Table. And then we built a bookcase for them as well. There it is. There we go. Okay, so we're going to wait till they put down the furniture, of course. Shouldn't take too long. There's not a lot going on in this fortress. There we go. And the chair. There we go. All right, so let's make this a study or an office. So click on office. And then you can paint multiple offices. Uh... We're not doing that. There's only one, so this is set to automatically be painting. Accept that. And then we'll call this the uh, manager's office. And then we're going to sign it to somebody. So when you're signing uh, rooms to your doors, the ones that have titles will be up first. Otherwise, I believe it looks like maybe it's the order of the doors that got here. Um, so... Use that information as you will, uh, so they know that at least the important guys are on top here. So let's do the manager, um, and then it's that easy. So let's go to the noble screen. We can see now it's green, it's checkmarked, they're happy. So they're saying they need a meager study, and if you look on the top left here, above nor quarters, uh, it's a modest study, so it's even better than what they were needing. So pretty cool. Uh, and so they will use that office space to work the work orders. Speaking of which, we need to make some work orders. So let's let's make work orders for these rooms here. So we've got uh, 12 rooms. Oop. So let's make 12 beds. So we're going to do a work order. Uh, let's do that again a little slower. So the tabs here, we want to go to work order. Then we're going to do this guy. And we're going to make make bed. Now, if you leave everything as default, um, it sh everything should work fine. If you click on the number sign or the hashtag, you can designate how many they're going to make. So we want to make 12. Um, now, you can be very specific with work orders. And I might make a separate video going in more in detail. But just for you guys to know, um, I'm going to click on... This guy tells you a little bit about it. But you can actually make rules with the work orders. Uh, let's actually, it makes more sense to go through here. So if we go to the work order icon down here, it's also a tab up here. We can see every single work order in our fortress. In my opinion, this work order menu could be a little better. Um, but I understand this is the first iteration of the Steam release. Things will get better in time. It works for now. So let's make a new work order. And let's say we're, we're going to do barrels. Um, dun, dun, dun. Where's my... Okay, so all tasks. 
As you can see, it does every single task in existence. If we do that, you can specify what tasks for each um, workshop or place. Uh, what we're wanting to do is just make wooden barrels. So we're just going to type in wooden barrel. And so can use any shop. Um, that means that they will go and try to do this any place that they can. Uh, you can always change this if you want. Um, but if you click on this green icon, it's adding a condition. So down here, it suggests some conditions for you. Amount of empty barrels available is less than 10. Um, amount of barrels available is less than 10. Amount of logs. So you can specify, like, um, if I have this many empty barrels, I need to make more. So let's, let's click on it. So restarts if completed, condition check daily. So they were, they're going to check this every day to see what the condition is and then try to meet it. So for an example, if the amount of, amount of empty barrels available is less than 10, they will make 10 barrels. Um, and then of course you can filter you can actually specify even more if you want them to change certain degrees of it you can make um let's see it's changing the thing on the left amount of empty barrels is available is not 10 it makes 10 at least 10 at most 10 and and so forth so if you're comfortable with this kind of thing i highly suggest making it but the reason so we're going to erase that work order the reason why i build my fortress so uh, specific with these different stockpiles is so i don't really have to rely on these work orders too much um, if you want to automate things that is the way to do it so for the work order again they're going to make 12 here and then we're going to make some hatches da, da, da. we got to make 12 whoops come on and then we are also going to make some, uh, we'll make some coffers. So that way they have a place to put things. Oops, we want a work order. Um, hello? That's weird. Sometimes that bugs out? Question mark? What's going on? My keyboard's working. Work order, hatch. There we go. I don't know what was going on. Okay. So we're going to make some coffers. We're going to make 12. Whoops. And there we go. So the reason why I also have multiple workshop is, is because one person can work on this work order and the other one can work on this one. Um, you can have multiple work orders, you know, if you want, but I want this to go as fast as possible. I could even divvy it up where, um, you know, make six here and then make six beds here, but we should be okay. So they're going to get right on top of that. Uh, these guys are still mining out that. Um, in the meantime, let's actually smooth out the bedrooms. I like doing that. If they're going to be spending their time there and have their own beds, uh, bedrooms, I want it to be kind of nice, you know? Just checking something. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And the reason why, I think right now work orders, you don't really, you have to have a manager to do it, uh, but they're just executed almost instantly. When you get a higher population, the manager has to come into their study and approve the work orders. So I don't know if they're the ones who check for the conditions every day and then like orders the other doors to do that. Um, I'm not really sure, but uh, you just have to have one. I also like to smooth everything out before I put furniture down. Uh, there are some things where they cannot smooth. Um, I want to say doors might be one. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there are some instances where they won't smooth it if something is already there. So I like to be safe than sorry. Smooth them out before we put any furniture. I know, exciting stuff, guys. 
So let's see. We're getting kind of low on food here. So let's tell our dwarves, because we got lots of drink. Definitely don't need to worry about that. Let's make, um, let's go to our kitchen and tell them to make some easy meals. We're going to do repeat. Uh, that way they'll just use up all the food that they can. Looks like our turkeys, let's see. If we go to the next box here, yeah, we can see that we have some eggs, so great. Um, I might actually butcher. I might butcher someone. Let's see. So if we go to pets livestock, we can see everybody here. I might do the donkey. It's not like there's a... I think you can milk donkeys, uh, but for anything else, they don't, they're not really super useful. Yeah, so we'll slaughter it. So if as long as they're not a pet, I definitely don't suggest slaughtering pets. Um, dwarves don't like that. So we'll slaughter him. So someone's going to take the donkey and take it to the butcher shop. That way we get some meat and some bones. That's the reason why I'm doing it. Do we have a refuse pile for... We don't. Okay, so let's make a refuse pile for our crafter here. So we'll say craft refuse stock. And what we want here is just useful refuse. So shells, bones, skulls, and teeth. And horns and hooves. Those, that's what's important now as for item types i don't think we need this yeah yeah we don't need that we just have to check mark those um the reason i'm not doing hair and wool is because nobody uses their hair and wool here uh up on top the farmer farmer's workshop they shear the animals and spin the thread. So I usually will keep that stuff up here. Let's take a look at the stockpile though. Okay, so we're going to take off skulls, bones, shells, teeth, and that. Because I want all that stuff to be where the crafting is. They don't need that stuff up here. So um, they'll keep everything else in there though. I think they're busy smoothing out the bedroom still. Yeah. Trying to see who's going to go up there and slaughter some... The donkey. Is he still there? I don't see him, but sometimes it's hard to see. Ah, there it is. See, she's got the donkey. And we're going to slaughter it. There we go. So you can see it gives you a little notification. Um, and then now they're going to prepare it here. Cool. So anytime a work order is completed, you'll get a notification for it. If you have an automated work order, sometimes this is kind of annoying. Because it'll tell you when they can't do it too. All right, so they are, oh, they're tanning the hide. Great. Um, looks like we have some donkey fat, which normally, ah, there it is. So when you ever get fat, there's a automatic, you could probably turn this off, uh, but they'll automatically render the fat. And what that does is it turns it into tallow. And I'm gonna do something. As soon as this turns into tallow, I'm gonna do something. Okay, perfect. So it's tallow. Now with tallow, you can do things with it. So let's go to kitchen. We'll go to the meat and fish and here's the tallow. And we can see everything else that they're able to use for food. Now with tallow, uh, you can use this for cooking. You know, it's fat, um, you know, probably liquid fat. And so you can use it for oil, that kind of thing. Um, but you can also use it for soap. I use all the tallow for soap. That way dwarves can clean themselves and for your hospital, they need soap to clean the dwarves, you know, for infections, that kind of thing. So I make sure to keep all the tallow. 
And for right now, let's see what our food stock is. That might be including it. No. Yes? Yes. So they'll keep the tallow in here for now. Once we create um, our soap making area, I'll show you guys how to filter that out. Um, so that way it's it makes more sense. For now, I'm just keeping the tallow in here. Good. So they're making some uh, biscuits and things like that. Uh, you... I kind of want them to pick that up. I don't know why. I think everybody's still smoothing. So you want to get that meat in a stockpile uh, in a barrel as soon as possible. Otherwise, it'll start rotting and create miasma, which is awful. So I'm hoping should be. Yeah, they should have they should be doing that. OK. Yeah, it looks like they're doing it now. Cool. Perfect. There are some things that just don't... They don't go anywhere. Or they, they're not used for things. So this nervous tissue, they don't use that for anything. It just needs to be in the refuse pile. And uh, just... Uh, what is it called? It's not rot, but it's just basically rotting away into nothing. So um, I'm not sure if body parts... That might be it. Let's let's see. So they got I think cartilage is the same thing. Oh. Oh, okay. It's autumn, which is uh we have to trade. I might be leaving that for the next video. Cause we're almost done here. So you can see they there have the cartilage here. Um and you can't use that for anything. I'm actually, oh, here we go. Someone's transferring that. Perfect. I like to make sure things are working when I'm telling you guys. So there we go. We butchered someone. They got their pieces where they need to be. You can see here in this uh, stock room, we have the skull here, the hoof, and their bone. Um, I use the bones to make uh, bolts for our hunter. Um, skulls are used to make totems. So if you type in totem make totem and then the hooves um i think are let's see you can decorate them so i think they i think they count as horns uh, so you can use it to decorate with um but yeah so that's good there so uh there's people with the trade depot i don't know did we build one i don't remember us building one yeah okay so we need one so i'm going to try to wrap up this episode here what we're going to do is, so the beds are done, so let's do that. So we're going to designate the beds. And I don't know what's the, oh, so the, okay, perfect. So everything's done. So let's do that. So we're going to go to doors, hatch. We're going to place it over the uh, stairs here. There we go. And then the last thing is the coffers. Chess. Okay. So we'll put them at the bottom of the bed here. Like a foot locker. All right. So we're going to let the dwarves do that. And then we're going to designate this as a way, uh, as bedrooms. Sorry, I'm getting um, distracted with the diplomacy and stuff up here, but we will cover that in the next episode. I just want them to get this going here. Cannot reach site. That's weird. So if you see something like this where they suspended construction, we want to... See, oh, it's probably this one. Usually that means that uh, there's something in the way here. So we can dump that sandstone. And then you want to resume the construction. It will not resume on itself. Um, I think you can click on this. Yeah. And then you can click on this button and it'll tell you which thing is doing that. There we go. Looks like we're just waiting for a couple more hatches and a bed, but they place it. Perfect. So we're done. 
All right, so the last bit here. Um, this will make your life easier. You do not have to designate a individually bedrooms. So go to bedroom, click on multi, and then highlight everything. What the game's gonna do is look for, I think just the door and possibly a bed to make sure it's in there. And then it designates little rooms. So we can see each one has its own room. We're gonna hit done. It's telling me there's 12, which is perfect. And then you can see here, each one's a bedroom. Now, some people might be clicking in here and designating a room for each dwarf. Don't do that. Unless you, if, if you wanna make a specific bedroom, like for your noble, mayor, whatever, that's totally fine. That's how you do it. But for everyday citizens, and you just wanna be fast, just leave it as is. They will come and claim their own bedroom. So that makes it a lot easier. It takes a little bit of time, but they will do it themselves. So now they have their own individual bedroom, which will make them happy. So uh, that's pretty much the end of this episode here. I just want you guys to know if you have any questions, please let me know. I will make a probably a spot at the end of the next video where I go over questions that you might have had in the comments. And that way I can show you guys how to uh, fix it. Look forward to the waterfall mist generator. I will be creating a specific guide for that one. It'll be different from this series. And uh, in the next episode of our casual guide, we're gonna go over trading and um, trying to think what else, trading. And I guess the workshop area, cause I'm gonna build another wing here, uh, which goes over smelting, uh, blacksmithing, creating coal, and then also soap. So there's gonna be quite a bit to talk about. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think so. I think that's what our next thing is gonna be. Of course, we'll just play it as play by ear. If something does happen, I'll make sure to show you guys because this is Dwarf Fortress. Things are gonna happen randomly and we just need to do what we can. Ah. I, I know what we can do. We'll do the trading uh, for the next episode and we will do a uh, drinking dining hall area, uh, which is gonna be connected to this bedroom because it's fast access to their bedroom. So look forward to that. But anyway, I appreciate you guys. If you made it this far and listened to me, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments below what you like, what you don't like, if I said anything wrong, if you have any questions. I like hearing from you guys and I like talking to you. So thank you so much. As always, this is Nathan. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I will see you 